What do you get when you blend corporate espionage with a sci-fi thriller? You get Inception, one of my favorite movies. There are so many elements to this movie that appeal to me, from the spy and heist nature of the film and characters to the elegant and surreal look of the film. I warn you, there will be spoilers, so I encourage you to view Inception first and then come back and watch this video. In this video, I want to explore why I can't stop watching Inception and why it's one of my favorite movies. So let's talk about it. Inception came out in 2010 as directed, produced, and written by Christopher Nolan. The film tells the story of a desperate man by the name of Cobb. Cobb, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, is a skilled extractor, which is a person who is highly trained to enter people's minds while dreaming to extract vital information. Cobb works for and is on the run from his employer, Cobalt Engineering. Cobalt wishes to turn him into the U.S. authorities for crimes committed. However, Cobb has a secret. A secret that constantly will not allow him to do his job. A secret that killed his wife. A secret that has him on the run and desperate to get back home to his two children, James and Philippa. Cobb is approached by a former target of his extraction escapades named Saito, played by Ken Watanabe. Saito promises Cobb a chance at a pardon from his crimes if he works with him to stop an heir to a multinational energy conglomerate, an heir named Robert Fisher, played by Killian Murphy. Saito explains to Cobb that Robert is on the brink of inheriting control from his dying father. If Robert Fisher inherits his father's company, then Saito will be pushed out of the industry. This is Cobb's last chance at freedom, and for him to succeed, he must form a team of the world's best extractors and face a secret, a secret that could destroy him and his new team in the process. Okay, I know it's a lot. However, that is one of the things I love about Christopher Nolan. He can take these heady, dense ideas and make them entertaining to watch. Some, if not most of his films, demand a repeated viewing to fully comprehend the small details and Easter eggs. One of the reasons I keep returning to Inception is because the story is so intriguing. I love spy and heist movies, and a lot of success of these movies is not only in the display and spectacle of the heist or spy game, it's how the characters in the film interact with one another. When I learned Christopher Nolan approached assembling Cobb's team to how roles are assembled in filmmaking, the film took on a new dimensionality for me. In an Entertainment Weekly article, Nolan states, Cobb is the director, Arthur is the producer, Ariadne is the production designer, Eames is the actor, Saito is the studio, and Fisher is the audience. Nolan states, in trying to write a team-based creative process, I wrote the one I know, which is brilliant. <laughs> it's important to know who to root for and who to watch out for, and Nolan crafted a film of rich characters that are a joy to watch on screen. So let's start off with Cobb's second-in-command, Arthur, played by the awesome Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Arthur is the man who is in charge of logistics of every mission. Arthur procures the information on the target and all the initial onboarding for new extractors. He is highly integral to Cobb's team, and he is the member we see the most next to Ariadne in the film. However, Arthur has a slight weakness. He's really good at planning, but not so good at improvising or creatively thinking on his feet. You see an example of this in the shootout in the warehouse during the first layer of the dream. Arthur first failed to obtain information on Robert Fisher, specifically that his subconscious projections were trained to combat extractors like Cobb and his team. This is a huge oversight because Cobb's team of six comes under fire immediately in the first layer. Secondly, Arthur's use of retaliation to protect the team when they are under fire in the warehouse is a bit lacking, to say the least. Arthur responds with an assault rifle to try and kill one enemy high on a roof who is responding with a similar assault rifle. This exchange goes on for a few seconds before Eames, played by the charismatic Tom Hardy, interrupts Arthur's failed attempts with a beautiful line and a grenade launcher when he tells Arthur, You mustn't be afraid to dream a little bigger, darling. This line eventually sinks into Arthur, and throughout the heist, you see Arthur become bolder, more creative, and doing some truly spectacular things to protect his team. Some examples include kissing Ariadne, the Penrose stair escape, the fight scene in the hotel hallway, which 
Joseph Gordon-Levitt did most, if not all of his own stunts, and the ingenious method he uses to induce a kick for all of his teammates toward the end of the film. Sidebar, let me explain kick. A kick is a way to exit the dream and return to reality. Give him the kick, what? Duncan. Most kicks are induced by ending one's life in a dream. However, throughout the film, and for the purpose of going layers deep into Robert's subconscious, a kick needs to be synchronized to a music cue. The music cue is Edith Piaf's Non Je Ne Regret Rien. I probably butchered that, but <laughs> this song is played in the first layer to give a signal to the rest of the teammates throughout the lower layers that the kick is coming in the first layer and they need to get ready to exit whether, whatever layer they are on. The next character I want to talk about is in some ways the true hero of Inception. She is in essence what makes Cop face his biggest secret because she is willing to face that challenge with him. I'm talking about the dream architect called Ariadne, played by the iconic Elliot Page. We are introduced to Ariadne through Cobb's need to find a new architect, Nash, Ariadne's predecessor, who fucked up Cobb's previous mission with Saito and also ratted them out to Cobol. Cobb explains he is unable to create worlds and dreams because of Maul. Maul is a figment of Cobb's subconscious and Cobb's late wife. She will not let him succeed. The dreamer, you build this world. I am the subject. My mind populates it. You can literally. An architect is a specific extractor who builds a maze within a dream. The maze must be big enough and convincing enough to allow the target to populate the dream with their subconscious. The more time extractors have in the dream, the more successful they are extracting the information they need and getting away unnoticed. If the dream world is too small or fantastical, then a target will know they are dreaming and they will do everything in their power to wake up. Ariadne is highly intelligent, perceptive, and empathetic. On her first test to become an extractor, she can create a maze that impresses Cobb enough to include her in the dream. She is the one who creates the iconic scene of Paris folding in on itself. Ariadne is also persistent and thorough. She wants to know everything and when Cobb tells her not to create anything from memory, that it has the potential to make the dreamer unable to distinguish what is dream and what is reality, she challenges Cobb and asks, is that the reason you can't create anymore? Ariadne encounters Maul, who picks up on Ariadne being a huge threat to her in the dream world. Maul looks at Ariadne as a rival, her replacement for Cobb's affections, and Maul wants to destroy her. Ariadne is the first to learn about Cobb's secret, that he is somewhat responsible for Maul's death, and that his guilt powers Maul. Cobb trusts Ariadne because she knows the full extent of the risk that the team is under every time they dream with Cobb. Ariadne is the one member who can save the mission by telling the team and Cobb that we need to dive into limbo to save Robert from Maul. Cobb must face and surrender to her. If you're going to do a spy movie, you need an actor who is not only great at acting, but one who is so charismatic they win you over. The audience with every scene. Eames, played by the magnetic Tom Hardy, is one such character. Eames is a forger and extractor, both the co-writer of the dream and the actor. He's a double agent who must research a target and impersonate the target's closest inner circle to gain their trust and extract the information. Eames is something of a free spirit, and we are first introduced to him in Mombasa at a gambling den. He is losing badly and needs money. Cobb, while kind of winning over Eames to kind of join his side and join his team for the actual extraction mission, is having trouble with how to snag Robert Fisher. And Eames brings up that you can't attack someone like Robert by going after his business motivations because you will be at the will of his sentiments and prejudice. You have to focus on the target's relationship with his dying father. You have to target the heart of the matter, so to speak. Eames is great at navigating the subtle art of espionage and being a bombastic killing machine. He can effortlessly embody the role of Robert's uncle, Peter Browning, whose influence, influence in Fisher Morrow is growing as CEO Maurice Fisher is dimming. When Cobb wants to run a gambit on Robert, Eames is the one who portrays the blonde woman who steals Robert's wallet. And when the team is under fire in the third layer of the snow fortress, Eames is the one taking out 50 projections on a ski mobile and rigging explosives. I love Eames and Arthur's playful rivalry, and you can see a lot of this during the course of the film, and it's a testament to Tom Hardy and how great he is at working with almost every actor. What do you mean by that? Inception is a film that plays with the nature of dreams and how the events in our waking life manifest in our dreams. The things we repress have a way of visiting us and haunting us in our dream world. Maul, played by the captivating Marion Cotillard, is a character who is something of an inversion of the unstoppable killer. We see played by characters like Michael Myers, Jason, 
and yes, even Lady Demetrescu from Resident Evil 8, who I think was inspired by Maul. Yes, I will die on that hill. Maul is beautiful, deadly, and unstoppable, and is a projection of Cobb's guilt. When Maul was alive, she worked with Cobb to explore the depths of the subconscious. The idea that time changes the deeper you go into dreams was a discovery that the pair did not account for. Cobb explains that at first it was fun exploring the world and being gods, but over time it lost its luster because he realized it was not real. Maul, however, felt the opposite. She became so enraptured by the dream world that she believed dreaming was the real world. The couple spent what amounts to 50 years creating their dream in limbo, crafting cities from memory and imagination. Maul abandoned her lifeline, her totem, so to speak, back to the real world and fully succumbed to being in the state of the dream. Sidebar, a totem is an object created in the real world to be used in the dream world. As Ariadne puts it, an elegant solution to a problem. For example, if you create a spinning top, you design everything from the, the design to the color to the weight and feel of it, and you spin it in the real world, that top will eventually lose its momentum and topple over and stop spinning. However, in the dream world, if you spin the top when the laws of physics no longer apply, that top will spin forever. Cobb often has trouble knowing if he's dreaming, so he pulls out the same spinning top that was Maul's in the film. Throughout the film, Cobb has an idea that and knows that Inception would work because unknowingly to the rest of his teammates, he used it on his wife, which had unintended consequences. Inception is the method of implanting an idea in someone's dream and using that idea to influence them to do the things you want them to do in the waking world. Cobb implanted that idea in Maul that her dream world, which she believed was her reality, was a dream. When Maul and Cobb returned to reality, Maul believed that she was still dreaming and that for her to get back to the real world, she had to unalive herself. Maul ultimately committed the act, but she engineered it to look like Cobb was responsible for her death so that he had no other choice but to join her. This act doomed Cobb to be on the run and never see his children. Watching Maul is truly terrifying as she gracefully stalks Cobb, Ariadne, and the team, knowing that all along that mob is Cobb, who secretly wishes to die and be with Maul. For Cobb, you need an actor who not only sh can show you so many layers of emotion, but an actor who can embody both narcissism and sympathy within that same body. Cobb, played exquisitely by Leonardo DiCaprio, is someone who is both the hero and the villain in their own story. He is a flawed man, but he is a man trying to succeed at something impossible. It's strange watching Cobb because he is a man who is consumed by guilt, nearly driven to by the thought of it, and yet watch him flee from Cobalt agents berate his teammates for missing details in the mission. You watch Cobb work with Robert and fail with Robert because he could not kill Maul even in the dream world. It's both tragic and at the same time entertaining. He is a man who perpetually is always so close to getting what he wants and subconsciously finds a way to sabotage it. Self-destruction, self-sabotage, fearing your past mistakes, imposter syndrome, and self-doubt are all aspects I know all too well in myself. And I think that is why I like Cobb as a character most of all. The duality of Cobb's innate very nature and the need to try and change his reality through dreaming is a fascinating motivation for me. Leonardo plays the character effortlessly, and I can understand why he was Nolan's first choice. Robert Fisher, played by Killian Murphy, is for the most part an enigma. We don't know much about him other than he is the target of the film and that he wants his father's love before he passed away. Watching Killian go through so many iterations of anguish, longing, persistence, and then finally hope is a sight for the eyes. For most of the film, he's treated as a damsel and a hostage in distress. You watch as he begins to understand the nature of the dream and his role, and Robert gradually becomes more alive, more bold, and wanting to break into the depths of his own subconscious fortress to get one more chance at reconciling with his father. It's beautiful to see, and Killian plays the character with so much range and dimensions, despite how brief he is on screen. Saito is the tempo of the film. He is the pacing of the film. He's at the beginning and ensures a successful conclusion to the main protagonist. Saito drives the urgency for the team to hurry up and get the information from Robert as quickly as possible when he gets shot. It's a visual cue to the audience that he is dying, and with each layer of subconscious the team delves into, he is given more time at life. Ken Watanabe is sophistication personified in this role. Every time I watch him, he seems to enjoy what he's doing, but he does it with so much class. 
I like how early in the beginning of the film, he managed to pick up that he is in a dream because the carpet he is lying on feels of a different material. He is in essence Cobb's hope of gaining his freedom. And when he wakens with the rest of the team at the end of the film, I watch him along with Cobb anxiously waiting to see when he's going to make that call. When I see a Nolan movie, I sometimes feel I need to wear a suit and tie to experience his movies. What I love about Inception are the rich colors of the Japanese inspired set pieces in the opening portions of the film. They are feasts for the eyes. And I remember when I heard the waves crashing and the boom, boom sound in IMAX, I was like, oh yeah, this is going to be good. The cinematography in Inception reminds me of Nolan's Batman trilogy. And there's a reason for that. Wally Fester did the cinematography for all of Nolan's Batman movies. I love the look of Paris and when Cobb is being chased in Mombasa, I feel like I'm on the streets with him. One of the things I love the most about Nolan's movies is his composers. Hans Zimmer and Ludwig Göransson are some of the best composers in the business. Hans Zimmer and all the tracks in Inception are some of my favorite next to The Dark Knight, Interstellar, Oppenheimer, and Tenet. I especially love the composition for the song Time and how the tempo of the song starts so low and quiet and slowly builds and builds in melody, power, and fortismo. One of the things I love to do is sleep and dream. It's a chance for me to just rest, but also explore what I'm really thinking about and what I may not be paying attention to. I'm someone who loves to discover the meaning of my dreams. Sometimes I dream about wolves and other animals. Sometimes I dream of being in high school again and trying, to, trying and failing to graduate for some reason. I like looking up and exploring how other people interpret these dreams and how they relate to my own experiences. I started this YouTube channel because I had a dream to talk about the things I love, movies, how they shape me into who I am today. Seeing others flock to my channel and enjoy what I have to say has been so humbling to me. I say all this to say I love the concept of the film Inception. The idea of going into your dreams and uncovering your subconscious to help you succeed in your daily life is a beautiful notion. Are there things wrong with Inception? Of course there are. Some of the pacing gets kind of wonky towards the end. The ambiguity of the final scene, not to mention there are some strong similarities between Inception and Satoshi Kon's masterpiece, Paprika. All this to say is that it's not enough to stop me from continuing to watch Inception. When I have trouble sleeping, I put on the film and it helps me snooze odd enough. And for some reason, I always seem to fall asleep before or after Arthur does the Penrose Steps trick. I can't stop watching Inception because it's a great film, but the great cast and crew, the surreal nature of the film entertains me and has the power to help me sleep. <laughs> it's a visual and audio representation of a warm, snuggly blanket. I love every aspect of this masterpiece. The film is so influential that, to Christopher Nolan that the maze-like design of his production company's logo, Syncopy, is inspired by the film. Dreaming helps us navigate and process the maze that is called life. One of my very first videos on YouTube was about how I had trouble sleeping, but I had to say something. This video is very special to me because it shows how far I've come in over a year. Well, that's all I got. If you like what I had to say, Feel free to like, share, subscribe, hit that bell to get a notification when I drop new vids. And as always, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and keep dreaming. Cabs out.